you've mentioned that you've kept journals of, of ideas that you've had over the course of your 20s and 30s. I'm curious to know what final idea sparked in motion the entire writing of the screenplay? Uh, the idea that um, and, uh, it's a sort of celebration of life in many forms uh, of it, of the, of the life, from so the funny uh, aspects of the life, uh, the tiring aspects of life. And uh, so um, it's a sort of um, a big picture about uh, how the life can be at the same time tiring and uh, funny and how the life is full of uh, useless things but at the end these useless things compose uh, the life and for this reason the main character that at the beginning uh, is uh, against his uh, own life at the end uh, decided to write a second novel exactly about the, the silly things that he has, uh, that he lives for all the movie, yeah. You've said that you identify greatly with the main character of the film. Uh, so I'm curious about writing that character, how much of it was drawn from inspiration in your own life and how much of it was uh, a collaboration with your co-writer? Um, the collaboration with my co-writer is very simple. We um, sit at lunch for, for several uh, lunch and we speak about the movie. Then I go back at home and I write the first draft and I give him and uh, he writes the second draft. So we, we, we do a sort of ping pong with the, with the script. And uh, the other, my point of view is very close to the point of view of uh, the main character in this case, mm. in the movie. Yeah. I noticed uh, that I had forgotten to ask you about the sequence with Fanny Ardon, which is a beautiful moment in the movie. And I'm curious if that was in part because of your admiration for Truffaut or how that, how that came about, if that was in the script, if it's something that you decided to do during production. Uh, I, I worked with Fanny Ardan in a previous movie. She was in another movie that I did. And um, uh, in that scene in the script, there was uh, the main character that met uh, a, an important person uh, uh, in Via Veneto, that's a, a glorious and famous uh, uh, street in Rome for uh, La Dolce Vita. So, uh, in that case, uh, I was happy to do a sort of homage to La Dolce Vita, and um, Fanny Ardan said to me that um, she has never done in, in, in her life the extra, but mm. only the actress, and uh, she said that uh, once in life it was nice for her to do the extra, so I, it, I thought it was a, <laughs> a very um, good chance for me to have an extra like Fanny Ardan. And so I called her to do, to play that scene, yeah. And so she came. <laughs> Tell us about writing the uh, the the opening scene with the, the Japanese tourist at the Janikoro. When um, when you're writing a, a screenplay, you uh, uh, you typically go for something a little shocking. Uh, tell us about you know starting the story that way. The the first scene. Um, uh, the, the idea was very simple, that the, the beauty is uh, the thing that uh, all of us uh, look for for our life, but at the same time, I don't know in which way, but there is something of dangerous in the beauty, and that can bring to the, to the death. And so in front of the um, beauty of Rome, a Japanese tourist uh, dies. It was a very simple uh, idea, and... Uh, uh, and then I, 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 my idea was also to establish soon that Roma is a, a city where uh, the sacred aspect of the first scene uh, works, that, that the sacred and the profane work together very well uh, in, uh, in Rome. And so I, I decided to have a, a first scene that, that was uh, something of uh, absolutely um, Seeker and uh, the second scene is exactly the opposite, uh, where there are all the all the examples of uh, uh, Italian decadence. Mm. Yeah. 
but also mm, good dancers. <laughs> <laughs> Well, tell us, tell us about uh, shooting that dance sequence in the beginning. Um, what, what, what sort of preparations did you do for that? How, um, how difficult was it to uh, shoot in that kind of a party atmosphere? No, it was not. Uh, uh, I have to say that I had um, very um, good extras, and they were very excited for three nights to do that scene. It was unbelievable for me, because usually the extras um, are, are bored after <laughs> one or two hours. But I don't know why, probably for the music and for the um, general atmosphere, they were excited to do that scene for three nights. And so we. Um, it was very, very tiring, but at the same, at the same time, for me, it's very funny to do a scene about people that dance because I think, yeah, I think that one of the most beautiful things in life is to see the people that dance well. And for this reason, I, I got uh, professional dancers. Yeah. Mm. And well, the, uh, the 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 motif of juxtaposing the sacred and the profane has is layered in in many different uh, ways in which you construct the film in terms of the contrast in cinematography, filming decadence, uh, the musical selections. The choose of the music is exactly in the way that you said, that uh, the, the music is a mix of sacred and profane, and uh, it works for, um, and it, 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 tel it helped me to say that uh, Rome is a city where all the days in all the moments of sacred and profane stay together very well. and. Um, about uh, cinematographer, uh, what can I say? We, we, it's a man with who I, I have done uh, five movies, and so now we we work without uh, speaking each other. That's the best condition for me to avoid to speak with uh, with uh, <laughs> all the people. And uh, so um, the good thing to have um, uh, the same person in your crew is that you can avoid to speak too much because during uh, everybody knows that during a movie you have to speak a lot. So if you can have an actor and a cinematographer that you know very well, mm. you, can, uh, you can communicate just uh, looking at each other. 